Welcome back to Ancient Presence. In today's video, we're going to take you on a tour of the Giza Plateau to see the three great pyramids of Egypt, one of the most amazing sites you'll ever see, and a place we highly recommend that if you can, to come visit at least once in your life to explore this great wonder of the ancient world. In this video, we hope to give you some insight into what it's like to be there yourself and things that you should look out for during your explorations of this massive and mysterious site. There are two entrances to the Giza Plateau, one in the north near the Great Pyramid and one in the east near the Sphinx. For our three visits, we chose to enter in through the Sphinx entrance so that we could start our day from the Guardian of the Plateau. This is where we left off in our last video, and heading west from there, we walked up the causeway that connects the Sphinx to the Pyramid of Khafre. It's a long walk, and we could have chosen to ride a camel or a horse but instead, we chose to use our own two feet and give the animals a rest. It's quite the undertaking though, because as you can see from this diagram that measures the plateau and feet, the site is massive and takes a lot of walking just to see what's out there. The causeway alone is more than 1600 feet or around a half a kilometer long and is quite a walk in itself. There are a bunch of tombs and temples to the south of the causeway that we did not have time to explore, and we kind of regretted it afterwards when we found out there's some pretty awesome stuff out there. At the end of the long walk up the causeway, we found ourselves at the base of the magnificent pyramid of Khafre. Right in front of the pyramid is what's known as the Mortuary Temple of Khafre. It's a very ancient looking and mysterious structure, unlike almost anything found anywhere else in Egypt. It's made of gigantic limestone megalithic blocks, many of which weigh more than 200 tons, and it highly resembles the valley temple in front of the Sphinx down the hill, which we covered in our last video. There were never any inscriptions found in either of these two temples, so we can't honestly say who built it or when. Exploring the special air of mystery around this site is quite the experience, and we definitely recommend to spend some time here walking and climbing around, enjoying this unique architectural marvel. Looking to the east, you have a great view over the busy city of Cairo, and to the north, the Great Pyramid looms high above. Looking up from the Mortuary Temple, we are confronted by the beautiful Pyramid of Khafre. It takes us a moment to really take it all in, and we spent a while standing in awe of this masterpiece. The pyramid has a base length of 215 meters, or 706 feet, and rises up to a height of 136 meters, or 448 feet. It's made of limestone blocks weighing more than two tons each. And as you can see, with Milo standing up on the pyramid, the base courses are absolutely gigantic, and made us feel tiny in their presence. This pyramid looks distinctly different than the others because the casing stones, which used to cover the whole thing, now only cover the peak, which gives it a majestic quality. The slope of this pyramid is greater than the Great Pyramid and sits on bedrock 33 feet higher than the Great Pyramid, which makes it appear to be taller for most places on the plateau. Walking around the base of the pyramid, we encounter lots of strange stones strewn about, many of which are hexagonal shaped, and like almost everywhere in Egypt, there are mysterious stones laying all over the place, and we can only speculate on what their original purpose was. Looking from above, we can see that the entire pyramid sits on top of a gigantic platform that was carved down into the bedrock before the pyramid was ever built. Along the north and west edges of the platform, there is a wall that reveals just how far the pyramid sits below the original level of the surrounding plateau. Walking behind the pyramid, you can see just how much material they had to carve out of the earth to level this platform before even starting the construction of the pyramid. The scale of this work is just astounding. Along this wall, we found lots of holes, doorways, and entrances to mysterious rooms, some filled with trash, and most of them blocked off and smelling like pee. In the northwest corner of the wall, somewhere around here, we found this hieroglyphic carving, 
and we haven't been able to find almost any information about it or what it means. So if you know anything about it, let us know in the comments below. After spending hours exploring the area around the Pyramid of Khafre, we headed south across the desert on a long walk to the Pyramid of Menkaure. This pyramid is the smallest of the three, with a base of 108 meters or 354 feet and standing 61 meters or 204 feet tall. Walking up to the pyramid, you immediately notice that it still has many of its black granite casing stones on the lower courses. These casing stones are really interesting, having a bulging character and protruding nubs that look identical to stones we saw on the other side of the planet in Peru. This is a mystery that we have yet to find any answers to. To the left of the entrance, we found a beautiful inscription. We have read that it references the death of Menkaure and states him as the builder. Another distinct characteristic of this pyramid is the giant gash in the front that was caused by an attempted demolition in the 12th century by the Sultan of Egypt. It supposedly took eight months to inflict this scar and proved to be so tedious that they gave up. Walking around the pyramid, we encountered large piles of rubble and out of place stones due to generations of quarrying and destruction. As we walk, we approach what is known as the Mortuary Temple of Menkare which sits on the east side of the pyramid. This mortuary temple is very similar to the mortuary temple and valley temple of Khafre in that it has no inscriptions and is made of extremely weathered looking megalithic limestone, some of which weighs more than 200 tons. This temple also contains very interesting basalt blocks that are partially buried in the sand and have the same nubs protruding from their faces. This adds another layer of mystery to this ancient site. Continuing around the east side of the pyramid, we got another look at just how complex and beautifully intricate the casing stones are. Can you imagine how this must have looked covering the whole pyramid? On the south side of the pyramid are three small satellite pyramids that are believed to belong to the queens of the pharaoh. As you can see, they dwarf in comparison to even the relatively small Minkaure pyramid. After exploring the area surrounding the pyramid, we made the long trek north across the desert, enduring the hot sands and direct sun. As we crossed the huge plateau on our way to the Great Pyramid, we decided to take a little detour and wandered cluelessly into the Great Western Cemetery, which sits just west of the Great Pyramid. We had an amazing time of exploring the avenues of royal tombs and burials, with intricate and beautiful stone walls halfway buried in the sand. And here we found some of the best views of the pyramids anywhere on the plateau. And it actually wasn't until we left this area that we learned from a guard that we weren't even allowed to be in there. Coming back out onto the road, we found ourselves at the base of one of the largest monuments ever built anywhere in the world, the Great Pyramid of Giza. Consisting of around two and a half million stones, this colossal structure is one of the most magnificent things you will ever see. Its base side lengths are about 756 feet or 230 meters long and takes quite a while just to walk around it. Its height is about 476 feet or about 146 meters tall, making it the tallest building ever constructed in the ancient world. Just to the east, there are three satellite pyramids attributed to the queens of Pharaoh Khufu. As you can see, they are minuscule in comparison to the enormous stature of the Great Pyramid. Another cool thing you want to see here is this boat museum. 
which houses a reconstructed ancient ship that was buried and sealed in this pit at the eastern foot of the pyramid, and is thought to have been built for the pharaoh Khufu. Apparently, this ship is a masterpiece of woodcraft and is about 150 feet long, but since we arrived late from our desert excursions just as they closed the doors, we actually didn't even get to see it. Another interesting feature surrounding the pyramid is this beautiful and unique ancient basalt floor of what used to be the mortuary temple of this pyramid. But the temple stones have all been quarried away through the ages, and the foundation stones are all that remain. The entrance to the pyramid is here on the north side. The original entrance was supposedly hidden behind casing stones, but now its beautiful angled stones outlining it are easily visible. A second tunnel was blasted open by the Caliph al-Mamun in the 9th century, so today, all tourists enter through the second entrance and the original is closed to the public. After spending three eight-hour days exploring the Giza Plateau, we still did not see everything that this magical place has to offer. We highly recommend this marvel in human history to anyone who is open to going there. By being in the presence of such rich history, we learned so much and left with a sense of awe about it all. We hope that this glimpse of the Giza Plateau will inspire you during your visit or give you the push that you need to go and see it for yourself. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And join us next time as we enter the Great Pyramid and show you what it's like on the inside.